Okay, so today's lesson is going to be on Punnett squares. We started covering this in that Zoom meeting that we had on Friday, um, but we're just going to review it a little bit uh, here today, and I have a quick task for you guys to complete today as well. But other than that, a pretty quick day. Um, so today's plan, we're going to do a very quick lesson on Punnett squares. We've already discussed these on Friday. We use Punnett squares, in case you've forgotten, to predict what the phenotype, in other words, the appearance, and the genotype, or in other words, the alleles that make up a gene, of the offspring will be. So in other words, when two parents create an offspring, we want to use a Punnett square to predict what is going to happen with that offspring. In other words, what kind of genes are going to be represented in that offspring. Uh, then I have a quick worksheet. I posted it on Google Classroom, of course, with a bunch of Punnett square practice problems I want you to try. Um, we'll go over these at a later time, but I'll also provide you guys with the answer key to this as well. So you won't be just totally in the dark on this. Um, but again, if you ever had any questions, you could just send me an email as hopefully you guys are aware. Anyway, let's get started. So Punnett squares are used to predict the chances of an offspring between two given parents having certain genetic characteristics. The alleles of one parent go on the top and the alleles of the other parent go on the left side. So in other words, as you can see in this picture here, they've drawn a Punnett square, which is basically just a square with four different sections in it, right? And along the top, they have one parent. We can just say this is the mom. It doesn't matter which one's which. We can say this is the mom and we can say this one on the side is the dad. Um, now remember, what you see is a phenotype. And I always remembered it by saying, okay, phenotype begins with a PH. Another word that begins with a PH is photo, right? Photo, you see a photo, right? So phenotype is what you see. That's just how I always remembered it. Uh, and uh, what the gene is made up of is called the genotype, right? So in other words, the actual alleles that make up uh, that gene. Uh, so if we look at this Punnett square that's been put on the side, if we said this top one is mom, you can see that the mom has a brown eye allele as well as a blue eye allele. But of course, because brown eyes are dominant over blue eyes, the mom actually ends up having brown eyes altogether. So you don't even see this blue eye allele. So connecting it back to this idea of phenotype and genotype, mom's phenotype is brown eyes. Uh, mom's genotype is capital B, lowercase b, right? So in other words, that is the actual genes or alleles, I should say, that she is carrying. Uh, dad is the exact same way. He's got brown eyes, but he is carrying a blue eye recessive allele, right? So how these work are, uh, you make your Punnett square, you have four different little sections in it. Uh, and as long as you've written one parent on the top and one parent on the side, you can just glide these um, alleles into each of these four sections of your Punnett square. So for this one, mom's capital B, this one gets dropped down here, and then dad's capital B gets dropped in here, right? So they just glide down or straight across. Same with in this part of the Punnett square, uh, mom's recessive comes down and dad's dominant comes over, right? Then down in this quadrant, of course, mom's dominant comes down, dad's recessive comes over. And then in this last one, mom's recessive comes down, dad's recessive comes over, right? That's all there is to Punnett squares, right? They're a very useful tool, however, because they can allow us to predict what the uh, mm -hmm. phenotypes, or what we actually see, as well as what the mm -hmm. genotype would be um, of each of these offspring, okay? So let's do uh, a couple quick examples here. Uh, a heterozygous rose plant, now remember heterozygous means different alleles, different alleles, there we go. Uh, with large thorns, oh, and there it is right there, there's your genotype, so capital R, lowercase r, those are your different alleles, it's a heterozygous uh, rose plant, uh, is crossed with a homozygous rose plant with small thorns, and that's lowercase r, lowercase r. So just before we move on, before we read any of the rest of this, um, since we were told that this heterozygous rose plant has large thorns, and that this was its genotype, uh, notice there's a capital R and a lowercase r, capital is always dominant, because this thing has large thorns, that would tell us that capital R is a large thorn allele. And that also tells us that large thorns on a rose plant must be a dominant trait, whereas this one with small thorns has two lowercase alleles, so the small thorns must be a recessive trait. So it wants us to draw a Punnett square and also list the proportion of the offspring that will have which genotypes and phenotypes. Well, let's start with that Punnett square. So I'll do my best to draw a square here. That's uh, not too horrible, there you go. 
hard to do this on a computer, of course, but there you go. Uh, and then let's draw both of the parents in this case. And it doesn't matter which one goes where, but I'll say the one with the large thorns, we'll put that one up here. So capital R, lowercase r. And then the one with the small thorns, we'll put on the side, lowercase r, lowercase r. So in order to fill out this Punnett square, we just have to drop down and drop over each of these pieces. So capital R should come down, lowercase r comes over, lowercase r here comes down, lowercase r comes over, capital R comes down, lowercase r comes over, and then lowercase r and lowercase r. So we actually have uh, some interesting things with the offspring between these two uh, rose plants here. Uh, so if we're going to list the proportion of the offspring that will have which genotypes and phenotypes, well, notice we have two of them that are capital R, lowercase r. So both of these ones right here. So two capital R, lowercase r. Uh, now, just to expand on this a little bit, it might be useful to say what that actually means. This, of course, is the genotype, but the phenotype of these ones. So what you would actually see is uh, large thorns because of course we have a dominant large thorn gene and a recessive small thorn gene but again it's only the dominant trait that appears so what actually appears like a photo in the phenotype these are two rose plants that have large thorns then we have two of these guys with uh, double lowercase r's so two lowercase r lowercase r uh, and this one hopefully isn't too big of a surprise because you have two recessive genes here and this means that your, oops, that your phenotype, this means that your phenotype is going to be small thorns because they only have that small thorn recessive gene. Um, I guess if you wanted to list it as a different way uh, of a proportion here, uh, because it's two out of four, two out of a total of four have large thorns, you could say there's 50% large thorns. And then the remaining two out of four are small thorns. So you could also say 50% small thorns. So that would be a good complete answer for this question. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, draw a Punnett square for a homozygous dominant black horse crossed with a heterozygous black horse uh, with the information that brown hair is recessive. Uh, also list the proportion of the offspring that will have which genotypes and phenotypes. So kind of the same thing as before. Now what's a little bit weird about this question is uh, they didn't tell us what letters to use for each of these alleles, right? They told us that this first horse is homozygous and that it's black uh, and that black is dominant. Uh, and then it also told us that this other horse is heterozygous, um, but it's still black, of course, because black is dominant and they told us that brown hair is recessive. Uh, when they don't actually give you the letters, like in the last question, they gave us capital R and lowercase r. When they don't give you the letters, you actually have total freedom over which letters you can use. The letters are just totally arbitrary. They don't really matter, just as long as the, the dominant character trait is a capital letter and the recessive character trait is a lowercase letter. Nothing else in that matters. So you know what, for uh, a black horse versus brown horse uh, situation here, we might as well use uh, the letter B. So we can say capital B is black and lowercase b is brown. And that actually works out pretty nice because of course like both Black and brown, of course, start with the letter B. So that works really well. Usually we try to stick to the exact same letter, uh, even if it didn't work. So if this was like black versus, um, I don't know, white, we could say, we'd use capital B for black and lowercase b for white. So don't just try to combine two different letters for the same gene, if that makes sense. Uh, anyway, let's start making this Punnett square. Again, draw a square and divide it into four portions, like a window. Uh, we have a homozygous dominant black horse. Homozygous means both of its alleles are the same and it's dominant, so we know it's going to be capital B, capital B. And then a heterozygous black horse. Heterozygous means different alleles, so capital B, lowercase b. So these two capital Bs are going to fill up this first box, so capital B, capital B. Same with these two capital Bs. This one comes down, this one comes over, so capital B, capital B. This one can come down, this one can come over this one can come down, this one can come over. So now if we're going to discuss the proportion of the offspring that'll have which genotypes and phenotypes, we can kind of do it the same way we did the last one. Notice capital B, capital B is here, but it's also here. So it happens twice. So we can say two capital B, capital B. Uh, and then just to express that in terms of a phenotype, the phenotype of these two horses with capital B, capital B is that they're going to be black, okay? 
As for these two horses down here, they have uh, capital B, lowercase b. So we can say two capital B, lowercase b. But here's what's interesting about these ones phenotype. These ones phenotype, because they hold that dominant black hair gene, that means they are also still going to be black horses. So if we wanted to kind of list it out, kind of like what we did on the last slide, and if I go back to the last slide real quick, you can see I listed at the bottom here, 50% large thorns, 50% small thorns. This one's kind of a weird one. In terms of what you actually see, in terms of your actual phenotype, um, all of these horses, so 100% of these horses are going to be black, right? So in other words, even though two of these horses will hold that brown hair recessive gene, that's not gonna show up in what you actually see in that horse. Okay, um, again, this whole Punnett square idea, it is quite a simplification. There's often more than one gene uh, allocated to hair type and stuff. So th this is just a very big simplification, but it is kind of an interesting way of looking at how uh, you could predict what offspring are gonna look like given the characteristics of a parent. So that's it. I told you guys it was gonna be a short lesson. That was only a little over 10 minutes long. So there's a worksheet on Google Classroom. This of course is found under week two. Uh, that shouldn't be a surprise. The reason I say, of course, is I would imagine you found this video under week two, so it should be in there. So look for the worksheet that talks about pun and squares. I will also post an answer key under week two. It might actually already be there by the time you uh, watch this video. Um, I'm recording this video, of course, Friday afternoon, so I haven't quite put together an answer key quite yet, but I will have it up there by Monday, so please just keep your eyes peeled. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, please let me know. The one thing I'll let you know one last time, of course, is remember, all of your teachers are going to be contacting you three times per week. Now, I can't speak for the rest of your teachers, but the way I prefer is through email. So please check your Grasslands email every single day, not just once a week. It'll be at least three times a week that you hear from me. So keep checking your Grasslands email. Anyway, that's enough for today, guys. Best of luck. Again, if you need me, please let me know. Talk to you later.